Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Perillo and this is your Geek Out for today. Before we go any further, I have to remind you that we still have the Locker Gnome survey going on because we want to know what you want more of from us. So it takes about a minute to fill out. Please do it. Our Geek Out is brought to you by Go to Assist from Citrix. Take control of your IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. With Go to Assist, you can keep all of your systems up and running while keeping all of your users supported. Provide live or unattended support from anywhere, even from your iPad. And for a free 30-day trial, visit gotoassist.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PERILLO. Who got last week's Loot Crate giveaway? Well, we'll be announcing that person on Twitter. And if you would like a complimentary six-month subscription to Loot Crate, uh, which is kind of like a, a gift box for geeks they send out on a monthly basis, uh, all you need to do is share the articles that we share with you. Like, you can look at the Locker Gnome links that we put in the video description. You press the click to tweet button. It makes it easy for you to promote. And we'll pick one of you at random. I mean, hey, it's free. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, according to our Locker Gnome app, available for both iOS and Android, the links are in the video description, our top user today is Dan Brown 77 He has shared the most, he has participated the most on Twitter, and it's definitely showing here in the Locker Gnome app. Congratulations, Dan. Thanks for participating. Bet you can't say that five times fast, or maybe you can. We published a few things over the weekend, including why you should wait until Service Pack 1 to upgrade to Windows 8. I mean, we would have made that recommendation for Windows 7, certainly for Vista, definitely for XP. So don't rush out and upgrade everything all at once. Do it slowly. And if you want to test anything, do it with a virtual machine. As we've talked about before, like Parallels or even VirtualBox, you can install Windows 8, see if it'll work with all your software. And if it does, then upgrade your computers. Of course, you may not have a good time with it, as you saw in my Windows 8 installation fail video. It was successful with one computer, just not with another. So if you can't afford to wait, I suggest you wait. Those of you who are kids, uh, you may want to cover your ears because we have an article for those of you who are parents. Uh, Candace has posted the day she lets her kid have a Facebook account. Many of you are on Facebook. A lot of you. My parents are on Facebook. Uh, and, and there's something to be said about, you know, understanding that this is the world that you're gaining access to when you put yourself out there on a social network like Facebook or even YouTube, right? And when you haven't quite developed fully into an adult, you may not realize just how powerful these publishing tools are. It's worth a read. Even if you are a kid, and maybe you don't think you're a kid, but if you're under the age of, okay, I, I don't want to, I like, I like everybody in my community. I don't care how old you are, so long as you're mature enough to handle the things that you're doing. Were you also disappointed with the iPod Nano announcement? I mean, I thought it was going to be the next big smartwatch. I mean, you saw what they did with the most recent iPod Nano, you know, and even companies came along and developed like a smartwatch type of wrist strap that you could slap your iPod Nano in there. Well, now they went back into the long form again with the iPod Nano. And, eh. But the good news is there are smartwatches available and we've collected them, well, not physically, but uh, a few of them that you can pick up right now, including Pebble and the Sony smartwatch. I have funded Pebble. I will be getting that, and I'll be doing an unboxing of that as well as a review. The Motorola Moto Active, and the list kind of goes on and on. So don't feel like you're completely abandoned if you thought that Apple was going to do something that they didn't. We've also posted a trip down OS X memory lane for all of you classic Mac users. The best electric shaver review and why you shouldn't go cheap. Of course, I Probably need to use one myself today. How to attend free courses from top universities. That was kind of fun and educational. And, well, not very costly because it's free. We also wrote about the diffusion of innovations. And that's good for all you entrepreneurs out there. Why 76% of airplane stowaways die during flight. There's some science. How can I stop impulse buying? Why do startups fail? The best cartoon app for Android, cartoon camera versus paper camera. The best food tracking app we found to be Lose It. Remote computer support business tips. And Home Festival, bringing the connected house to your home. House? <laughs> meant house. Came out. House. House to your home. House is a, just a building. The home is what you make it. So we've shared all that information for you on LockerGnome.com. Take a look. But... Without further ado, I want to geek out about something. And I mean really geek out about something. I use the smartphone camera like many of you use the smartphone camera. This happens to be an iPhone that has my 
finger in view. Uh, I'm frustrated, and I can't be the only one. It has to do with this. See how I slid my finger across to put it to video mode? I am now recording vertical video. That video will be completely unwatchable. I mean, not just because I'm recording junk around me, just that who watches vertical videos? I mean, do you stand your television vertically? Do you stand your monitor vertically? I mean, you may be able to watch it on a screen like this, but who does that? I mean, movies aren't released like that, you know, in a vertical capacity. Why would we want to see vertical video? I wish Apple would stop. I, I wrote about this, and there was even a, a few videos that I decided to embed in the article just complaining that this even exists. It's not a problem with the hardware. I mean, the lens here is round. The issue is with software, and the iPhone and iOS is not the only person guilty of this. It's just that we see a lot of vertically recorded videos as done on the iPhone. Apple can stop this. They have the power to stop this. It can be fixed. Everyone holds their camera like this, right, when you're taking a portrait photo, but why do they continue to hold it this way when they're recording video? They're not thinking about what it's going to look like on the other end. I mean, it's just an easy software fix to rotate the screen so that you can still hold the camera this way, but the video is being recorded in a traditional, well, widescreen fashion, landscape mode. Apple can fix this. Why haven't they? It, it's, it's just maddening. When I run across a potentially great video, or even having recorded video, and, and not intentionally doing it in such a way that it was being recorded in, in portrait, I wanted it to go landscape. If you hold your uh, smartphone flat, there is a chance that it will record in the wrong, um, well, it's the right dimension, just the wrong orientation. And you might say, well, Chris, all you need to do is rotate the video. I don't think you get it. Okay, if I was to record a video like this and rotate the video, in order to watch it, I would have to tilt my head to the side because it doesn't actually rotate without zooming full in and cropping and losing how much data out of your video? Uh, zooming and, and, and rotation in, in software is not a practical solution. It needs to happen at the recording level, and Apple has the power of doing this. It's rather upsetting uh, that the iPhone still doesn't fix this problem. Uh, and yes, I'm concerned. If only because I see a lot of vertical video out there. And I'm doing this and saying this because, well, one, I would hope that you guys agree with me and this sucks. Uh, number two, I want to point out the fact that the iPhone isn't perfect. Okay? There. I said it. It's not perfect. No smartphone is. Are you surprised? I iPhones have problems. They've had problems from day one. But you know what? That hasn't stopped them from selling well. In fact, Apple released a statistic today... <laughs> they released some numbers this morning saying that their first day of sales uh, doubled the first day of iPhone 4S sales. So the iPhone 5 sold 2 million within a short period of time, as opposed to 1 million within a short period of time for the 4S. So the iPhone 5 is going to be popular, uh, likely popular, despite what people saying it being boring and disappointing. Uh, but it's not perfect. Uh, and, and this really goes out to those of you uh, who believe that, you know, the smartphone is a religion. Uh, that's not the case. You know, you don't change your religion every other year. You probably change your smartphone more frequently than that. And if you're like me, you probably change it more frequently than your underwear. That's not a religion, okay? It's just the choice of a device. You have to accept the platform for its strengths and its weaknesses. And when you do that, then you can find something that fits you. But what you have to understand is what works for you may not work for somebody else. Every platform has problems. And yes, the iPhone has problems. And I don't think anybody would say otherwise, unless, of course, you're Apple. But then again, I wouldn't expect any company to come out and say, yeah, our phone has problems. No company would do that. None. They'd be crazy, especially if they were a publicly traded company. So, um... <sighs> problems, problems, problems. All I'm pushing for are solutions. Maybe you guys know of an app that fixes that problem. I, I know there are a few available, probably for iOS, maybe even for your smartphone of choice. Uh, I would like to, uh, you know, surface those solutions to fix problems. Instead of just fetching, did I say that right? Fetching? I think, I think that's, I think I said it right. Uh, I would like to actually connect people with, 
you know, something that can solve a problem rather than just complaining about a problem. And the last thing I'm going to do is lambast you for your choice, whether it was the iPhone or, or not. So I think I've made both camps happy. The iPhone supporters and the people who hate the iPhone. You can't, you can't lose. Of course, I can't win. Either way, I'm uh, very grateful uh, that uh, you have paid attention to me to this point in the video. I wanted to cover a few other news stories. Uh, Google is taking on Instagram and Facebook by acquiring top iOS photo app Snapseed. You may have downloaded it. It was a favorite iPad app. Uh, it is also available on uh, the iPhone or, or for the iPhone. I've used it before. Um, maybe it's just not... For me, I know there are a lot of Snapseed fans out there, and if you like Google, well, then you're probably going to like Snapseed now, or you're going to have no choice, because it's going to be Google's. Microsoft is confirming an October 25 launch for Windows 8. We've done some reviews, but if I can get a hold of a good Windows 8 PC, and that would be, in my estimation, one with a touchscreen, I, I would like to be able to do a live unboxing and a live review of uh, the Windows 8 launch, possibly even a live discussion with you guys, even if I don't have a new uh, Windows 8 PC on me that day. Oh, and speaking of, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, uh, but... We're going to be doing two live streams this week, one for the iOS 6 launch and two for the iPhone 5 arrival and unboxing and initial impressions. So I don't know when those times are going to be exactly because I don't know when iOS 6 is going to be released on Wednesday or I don't know when my iPhone 5 is going to get here on Friday, but stay tuned to my Twitter feed and Google Plus and Facebook and whatnot and the Locker Gnome app will push that out as well um, to, to tell you when those live performances, performance? Whoa, when those live shows are going to be happening here on YouTube. JetBlue to roll out in-flight Wi-Fi in Q1 2013 will launch free of charge. Wi-Fi to me on a plane is as expected as it is when I go into a hotel room. I just want it to be there. I need it to be there. Why not? Why fi not? Warp drive may be more feasible than thought, scientists say. Sweet! So I can go back in time and tell myself to make this video suck less eventually. And speaking of sci-fi, you may have caught this share earlier on my Google Plus page. It's an R2-D2 luggage case baggage rolly thing. Cool, huh? I'd wheel one of those around. It'd probably get stolen, too. Ben Watkinsart from LockerGnome.net writes, what do you think will be the name of the next Android version? I'm gunning for high fructose corn syrup, although that's more of a component of some kind of sweet treat, not a sweet treat itself, but it would just be funny. This question was asked yesterday on LockerGnome.net by the Sellables. What do you think on Samsung's new advert against Apple's new iPhone? He's referring to an ad that Samsung has produced that says it doesn't take a genius where they compare the Samsung Galaxy S3 to the iPhone 5. And it's a good comparison, but, you know, comparisons are usually always flawed. I mean, because inevitably, one piece of hardware is going to be different from another piece of hardware. I mean, even if they're in the same category, they're just going to be categorically different. I mean, yes, they can make calls, and yes, they can run software, and yes, they have screens. But the advantages or disadvantages are seemingly relative. So Samsung's trying to grab some attention, rightfully so. Uh, they may sway a few users from it. Uh, to you know, from buying the iPhone 5. But the thing is, I don't know if a lot of iPhone users are feeling pain enough to switch. And they may know that, you know, the Galaxy series exists, but they may not be interested. You could throw a million features and they're still not going to be interested. And you know what? Here's the thing. The same could be said for the other side. I could throw a list of 25 million features in the iPhone 5 and you may still not be interested because it's just not for you. Maybe you want Android. Maybe you want a bigger screen. Maybe you want something that Apple doesn't provide. Cool! <laughs> it's all relative, man. Uh, it's a good education campaign, uh, letting users be aware that there is an alternative to the iPhone. But I just don't know if that's going to be successful. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. How many more Macs were sold? I mean, I'm sure a few, but people still kept buying the PC. They were elevating their competition. That was as much an advertisement for PCs as it was for Macs, despite how poorly they made PCs look. People are buying Macs, but 
not in droves. That's for sure. Doesn't mean that Apple's hurting. They're making a lot more money with these things being PCs than the traditional desktop computer. I wish Samsung would just advertise its own products and let them advertise themselves. That'll work. If you've got a good product, why would you need to have advertising? Well, whether you love me or hate me, whether you agree or disagree, at least you watched this far and I appreciate that. I also appreciate the comments, the shares, all the downloads to our Locker Gnome app, all the comments we get on LockerGnome.com articles. We appreciate those as well. The shares, the comments, the likes. We really love those. We'll see you later.